So I'm going to get busy here. We're about to take off uh, cross-country skiing for the afternoon. That's uh, going to get this done because I'm on uh, the dining room table. She who must be obey has been staring out the window all morning and uh, if the storm gets any worse I'm going to have to let her in so we better get this done quickly. Before I have the one Zippo rebuilt that I own I thought I'd better document this. So this is how I'm going to rebuild the Zippo with carbon felt and some proper platinum catalyst. The Zippos are a bit harder to do because they have that obstruction in the reservoir top. So I'm going to have to deal with that. So the tools that I've got for this are my materials to start with, which is the carbon felt and the catalyst there. So those are those two. And then you come back down and I'm, there's various ways you could achieve this. I'm going to go about it using a Dremel with a cutting tool. At least I'll try that. Don't forget your safety glasses. You'll need some tweezers, probably some forceps, or maybe some spring-loaded needle nose pliers, and uh, the scissors that are there. And your carbon felt, by the way, I believe what we're going to do with the rebuild kit, this is five and a half inches square, which it's just about the right distance for packing into a regular size Zippo hand warmer, which I believe is about half of five and a half inches, but would that be two and three quarters, I suppose. So I'll get these tools ready and then we'll get this party started. So we'll start by securing the Zippo into a vise or some other method, securing it, putting on your safety glasses and we're going to remove these two rails and smooth that uh, portal so that we can get the obstruction out of there and create a path to get the cotton out. So now we've got those out, Hi. just going to smooth this up and uh, she who must be obeyed is banging on the window so it looks like I'm going to have to let her in. Be right back. Sorry about the noise there in the last shot. That was my daughter coming in with her friends. They'd be much better at modeling than I am. However, they're on their way to go skiing too. Don't forget when you're cutting this out, hopefully you won't have any recent fuel in there that is going to catch the sparks and uh, fire up on you. And now that I've cut the rails out, probably what I'm going to do before I smooth that out is get some of that batting material out. That's where the forceps come in handy. And just pull it all out of there. You can use needle nose pliers for that as well. And it's not hard to get all of that out. I think with when I do it, because I have lots of carbon felt, I just fill the whole thing with carbon felt because then I get more fuel retention and a longer life on that. However, if you've got a couple of these to do, oh, I see what they've done here on the Zippo. They've actually got plastic on the bottom. You don't see that on the Chinese hand warmers. Maybe I'll put that back down there. That must be some sort of a some sort of a barrier. So it feels like it even might be partially glued, so I'm not going to pull it all the way out and inspect it. I'm just going to tamp it back down. So uh, we're both learning as we go along here. So be aware that you're going to encounter that plastic and you can either push it back down. So I didn't get a lot of cotton batten out of there, as you can see. And uh, I'll probably get more carbon felt in. So you've got a piece of carbon felt that's about five and a half inches by five and a half inches and you are going to cut that into strips to pack down into there. However, first I'm going to smooth the portal entry to facilitate getting it in and out and uh, 
not slicing my fingers. squeeze it too much that you crush it. Now this is the way I go with my carbon felt. You might have a better technique. Uh, if so, feel free to improve upon it and make some suggestions. Just cut a few strips and um, these strips can get shorter as you go along or narrower as so required. All you're doing is packing it into your reservoir and you're trying to find the easiest possible method. Because the portal on this one's a little smaller, it might require smaller carbon felt. Then what I do is you can either use tweezers or forceps and start packing it in. So pack the carbon felt in as best you can. I basically just start packing it in with the forceps and uh, then you just maneuver it, massage it into place so that it gets down nice and even in layers within the reservoir. And now you see why the forceps are sometimes better because you can grip it and then force it in like that and then take it out. Before you go to the next strip, get in there and just tamp it down and then grab your next strip in the middle with the forceps and then insert it into the body and do the same process again until you've got you're near the top and as you get near the top we might be cutting these in half and then inserting them. So now that I'm near the top you can see that's about where I'm at. I'm gonna cut a couple of smaller strips and one of the things I found handy near the top is have it up flat so that the interface right under the head you don't have any little corners sticking up. Uh, it's a nice flat surface right underneath there to uh, I don't know if it makes much difference but my theory is is that evaporation will be better if it's being launched off of the area that is a uh, nice and flat square surface. So I'm going to manipulate these in there and for the very last one I'm going to get it so that it's basically sitting like that inside the reservoir in there. So that's what you're trying to achieve on the very last layer that you put in. So here's how I'm going to do this very last piece and um, try and get it in straight. So I'm going to grasp it in the middle with forceps. I'll s insert it up to about that point and then remove the forceps and then try and articulate it into each corner so that I can make it come back and be flat inside so that I'm going to spread the edges over toward the shoulders of the hand warmer and just tamp it and spread it and tamp some more and spread it until I've got the desired amount. Now if you really really want 12 hours out of this guy you can really pack it tight um, 
In other words, you can almost like filling your gas tank. You can decide how much you want to retain in there and go from there. Um, I find that I generally don't plan on being out for 12 hours, so whatever just fits nice and snug in there seems to do the trick. So now I have what looks to me to be a fairly good surface there. And the next step is going to be to take the catalyst and I am going to take the old catalyst out of that head which never worked very well. I should get that one analyzed and see what it is and go from there. Before you do all that check your fit that you didn't wreck everything with your Dremel or whatever you use to get those rails out of there. It still seems to be pretty good. So we'll carry on here. What you've got inside the Zippo heads is a retainer of some sort and all the heads are have a retainer of some sort in them which you're going to have to remove and then you decide how you want to hold your catalyst in again. You're going to pack it in. You can see that the Chinese heads, which by the way don't fit the Zippo, you're going to have to keep your old Zippo head, um, have a retainer in them as well. What I'm working on is getting some custom size springs that I'll be putting the catalyst into and fitting them in the heads to hold it in. But those springs are going to take about three weeks maybe to get here. And in the meantime, I'm going to work with what I've got. So it'll mean trying to retain the old bulkhead that's in the head and uh, reinserting it. So that pulled out pretty easily. It, the Chinese ones are held in on the distal ends and uh, it's more of a proximal fit in the Zippo. And now you, I can take my old catalyst out and um, set it aside. And now we're going to take some of our new catalyst material and what I'm going to do is cut it into a size that uh, strips just as I did with the carbon felt and um, work on putting it in there. So I'll be right back to do that. Because I'm not sure what is in the catalyst material, I err on the side of caution and wear PPE which is all you government employees know is the acronym for personal protective equipment and I'm going to take my new piece of catalyst and cut it into a size that looks to be about appropriate and now I'm going to take it and insert it into the head Now here's where you can also fine tune what you're doing. The more catalyst, the more heat. Now the piece I just put in there approximates more or less what I took out. There's the old one and there's the new one. Now my theory is, and time will tell, what would happen if I put more in. So because I have lots of it, I'm going to do that. I'm going to put in twice as much as what was there before and see if this thing ends up. I've never heard she who must be obeyed complain about these things being too warm for her hands. Put your bulkhead back in again and for that you may need to straighten it in order to get it to connect. This seems to be yeah, I'm gonna have to do a little bit of work there to get it to clip back in so I'll do that and fiddle with it and uh, what we'll end up with is uh, 
is a catalyst head that ends up looking like this. So I'm going to go and fiddle with that bulkhead there and try and get it to retain the catalyst properly because I don't have any springs that are the right size. So I seem to have achieved a bit of retention here. It may wiggle loose over time um, and maybe I've got it packed too tight. This is all going to be what I'll work with and uh, do some trial and error. But now this is what I've got after replacing the catalyst and the Zippo head. So be careful when you pull that retainer out because if you want to reuse it you don't want it deformed to the point where it's going to be problematic to get it to fit perfectly again. And I would say that you see the two little indentations there, the retainer indentations. There's none on the ends. That's where you're going to be aiming at lining, lining that retainer clip up with. Now all I have to do is fill the reservoir and light this and we're going to take off to Emerald Lake and do some skiing. Uh, it's not really hand warmer weather per se, it's just below freezing, but we'll give that a try and see how it works out. Maybe later do a temperature test with uh, a different one. And I thought as long as I was about to fill I should also make a couple of observations about filling because this little watering can which I receive with the hand warmers and you see quite often. Uh, the last time I saw that being in used, I was trying to recollect, I think it was some Muppet that was out watering their garden. Um, in order to fill up a hand warmer, it's ridiculous. So when you get this, throw it in the garbage. And if you have any vaping friends, they all have these things for filling their juice up, which work very well. And now I'm shipping one of these bottles with uh, each hand warmer when we send it out. So maybe I should include it with the kit as well. These are nice because you can pressurize the fluid and measure the amount so you don't overfill and get it in quickly. So 15 mils is going to be fine for me. You can do trial and error because depending on how you pack your reservoir, it that might dictate how much you're going to get in there. So I'm going to fill my reservoir with the 15 mils of naphtha. I use naphtha. I don't use lighter fluid. I go by camping gas, white gas. So that's probably enough for me for the afternoon. It looks to me like I might be able to get this much in there which I believe is somewhere between 30 and 45 mils. I'll have to measure it. It doesn't say on the bottom. And uh, overfilling means you end up turning this device into a bit of a candle making it really hard to light so you're better off to fill with an exact amount. And you saw how convenient that was. It wasn't messy. It went in really quick. You weren't sitting there like this trying to water your garden and pour it in with it falling out over the top and uh, waiting for it to get in there and settle down. You're done. So put the top back on and then you can get busy with trying to light the head if you had any fuel in your ignition device which I don't appear to. I used them all up on the last video so I might resort to matches. With respect to lighting these, I find it's better to let them sit for a while if you have the luxury of being able to do that. So the evaporation is working with the catalyst material and uh, you're not likely to get a flame that way. I also found by the way that using this bottle was just about the right amount for the small hand warmer which I like for tucking into gloves or ankles and these are good for pockets so you're probably going to get one of these in these guys and one of these in the small ones. So then as I've shown in other locations once you have a lighter that works
you can see already on the Zippo, I've got a glow there, that probably the sparks or that small amount of flame alone, I can feel heat growing there now, is enough to get that going. And then I'll do the same with the Chinese peacock. That alone, you can see, I can see it glowing now, you probably can't see that, but just that little splurt was enough to get that one going as well. And I just finished filling the small one, so we'll see if it's had long enough to... And it does look like that's working as well. So, if your lighter gives up on you in the field, don't despair. You can probably get that catalyst going with the striker. And if I was out in the cold, I would be preheating the reservoir with the lighter as well. So now, give them uh, 5 or 10 minutes to heat up. And if they don't, then you can try again. All right, time to let she must be obeyed in and uh, get our ski equipment ready and take off and field test them. Do you remember your hand warmers? Yes, I got it. We're going to need to test them because I forgot mine. <laughs> 